Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a new, very unusual discovery of a supernova that just doesn't make sense. A supernova that should not exist or that is totally breaking the laws of physics. Anyway, let's discover more about it and welcome to What The Math. So imagine for a second, the year is 1950-ish, and we're basically looking at this galaxy, a dwarf galaxy, relatively far away from us. We're looking at the region that we have a name for, it's called IPTF 14 HLS. And what do we see there? Well, we actually see what seems to be a supernova. And we expect it to disappear after a few hundred days, but we kind of stopped looking at it because by then we've discovered quite a few, and since then we've discovered at least 5,000. Well, and we kind of forgot about it. And then something else happened. A few years later, the year is now 2014. And it just so happens that as we're looking at this region of space again, we notice something else. We notice another supernova in the exactly same region of space. And this time we keep looking at it and we realize that instead of disappearing within about 100 days, this supernova seems to have been around for at least three years now. And that really blew our mind. And we realized that this supernova occurred in exactly the same region of space as the previous one. And it seems to be not really disappearing almost at all. As a matter of fact, it seems to flash a lot and pulse and create a lot of flashes in this region of space that is totally, totally breaking everything we know about physics. And so the scientists started to think about what exactly is actually happening. And so they started coming up with theories, but none of them really made sense so far. As a matter of fact, the only two th theories we have are very far-fetched. But first of all, let's actually go and zoom into this object for a second and see what's actually happening. So first of all, we know that this is a very large star. This star is about 50 masses of our own sun. And because of this, this is probably why it's causing all of these unusual effects to occur. When it's, this star exploded, it created a supernova. And the supernova was very, very powerful. But we think that, normally at least, they usually end up as either neutron stars or black holes at the end and basically post-supernova, there is kind of just like this leftover object. In this case, it's actually a black hole that's right there in the middle. And this is kind of usually the end of the star's life. But it just so happens that this particular object didn't die. This, it just so happens that it may have actually still been there. And... 50, or I guess 60, or technically 64 years later, we saw the explosion yet again. Now the flashes we can kind of explain. So we've noticed that there are flashes coming in and coming out, and this we think is because the, the wave from the second supernova is actually reaching the waves from the first supernova, is interacting with them, and it's creating these very unusual flashing effects that you might see in a few seconds here, if I actually advance this. And these bright flashes might be the result of just the two waves interacting. Or maybe it's something completely different that we really have no idea about. I'm still waiting for those flashes to appear. There's one right there that just occurred. Um, but um, this is kind of what we at least think the flashes are doing. And here's another flash that just occurred right on the left side there. So. This is maybe what's happening there, but this still doesn't explain how the star can actually survive one supernova and possibly even survive two supernova. So we have to go back to the drawing board here. Let's actually start with the facts and things we know about this particular uh, supernova. First of all, we know that these waves seem to be moving about six times slower than usual. And they've been here for at least three years now. This is way, way longer than usual, at least uh, six times longer, actually. This could be the result of uh, several things, of course, but one of those things could be that this star that was there originally didn't actually lose all of its energy, and this hypothesis has a name. It's called 
positional pair instability supernova. So what this implies is that somewhere right there in the middle, this star of about 50 masses, when it exploded, it basically didn't explode completely, but it only exploded half of it. And the other half remained behind. So in other words, when you explode this star, there is at least another half of the star left. And after some time, specifically in this case, I guess, something like 64 years or 60 years, um, this star will explode again because the material will actually kind of get close together again, become unstable and will produce yet another supernova. But once again, this doesn't actually explain why these uh, very unusual uh, supernova waves are actually moving so much slower and in such an unusual pattern. The other um, theory, or I guess the other hypothesis, is even weirder. And it actually involves antimatter. So, because this star is so massive, it might actually represent a star that is kind of similar to the ones in the beginning of the universe. It's so massive that inside of it, it starts producing antimatter. And this antimatter starts reacting with matter, and when antimatter reacts with matter, it produces a nuclear explosion, basically supernova. Then the material that is still star-like and is not explored by the supernova reintegrates into uh, another star and the process repeats itself yet again when new antimatter is made due to the masses involved and creates another supernova. So this uh, theory is obviously very, very far-fetched, but it would actually, if it's true at least, explain so much. First of all, it would actually show us what the universe was like billions and billions of years ago. This is basically like looking back in history at the creation of the universe. On the other hand, it would also help us understand how antimatter is produced, how it reacts, and what it really uh, does in our universe, and also why there isn't that much of it left. We actually expect there to be a lot of antimatter, but it just doesn't seem to exist. But unfortunately, like with all theories, these two actually do have a lot of unexplained loopholes. One of them being that, well, first of all, this uh, actual supernova is way more energetic than it should be. Second of all, the uh, presence of hydrogen in the actual spectral lines defies the explanation. And third of all, why is this stuff moving so slow compared to other supernova? And, of course, just the fact that there is no neutron star left and no black hole, but instead a star, also makes things very, very complicated. In summary, what this all means is that we know nothing about what's happening here. This is just as mysterious as dark matter. We have no idea why this happens, we have no idea what's going on, and in the last few years we've never seen such a supernova ever before. Like, for example, rather than cooling down as expected from the star, this star maintained a constant temperature of about uh, 6,000 uh, 6, degrees Kelvin. How that happens, we have no idea. Uh, the brightness of this region varies as much as 50% uh, regularly, but sometimes it actually starts doing it randomly. So, what happens? What is going on? What's actually causing all of this? And since this object is so far away from us, specifically about half a billion light years away from us, it's going to take a lot of observation to try to figure out what's happening. It's basically like staring at a galaxy that just had a supernova from like super, super, super far away. It does take a little bit of patience and we need to basically just wait for it to either happen again somewhere else to understand it better or to keep staring here and hopefully we'll see it again happen in the next few years and maybe even something that we didn't expect. So yet another mystery of space, something that will hopefully be solved in the next few years and something that I'll get to talk about in the next video sometime in the future. So do come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and you're about to find out what happens if you remove the central black hole from a galaxy. Thank you guys, I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully we'll discover what's up with this unusual supernova and this unusual star. Space out, and as always, bye bye.